Now we just got finished talking about how the word is perfect, how when we walk according to the word, the correct word, we will be perfect. He command us to be perfect. But here we see in Hebrews 7 and 12, for the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change in the Torah. Once again, if it's perfect, it doesn't need changing. And once again, we don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews of Hebrews, but the Most High knows, and this person will be held responsible for changing the Most High's word. Here we have a change, which this shouldn't even be within the scripture. What do we have here? Continuing on here, what do we have? Acts 12 and 4. You will see, if you turn to Acts 12 and 4, you will see the word Easter. Where did Easter come from? Easter in our Bible? Here it is. Easter. What is this Easter? We know what they changed it. We understand that this is, should have been the Passover. And they changed it to Easter. Why did they change it to Easter? They didn't have, they didn't want us to have anything to do with Passover. And so that's why every, you know, we have these Easter Sunday services in the churches and they don't acknowledge the passover whatsoever but this is what we have the passat is the 86453 this is what they changed they changed the word of the most high those translators they they are going to you know they are right now paying for the changes that they made to the most high's word but we see here it should have been Passover, Passover, they could have, and this was to remember how he brought us out of Egypt. All right, now we're going to go into the scriptures and see the examples of changes being made. And these changes we will see coming from Paul's letters. Yes, he made many, many changes. He quote, he misquoted many, many things. Leviticus 18 and 5 says, you shall Therefore, keep my statutes and my command and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them. I am Yahuwah. What's the change? Galatians 3 and 12. Yet the law is not of belief, but the man who does them shall live by them. You understand the change here? Look at the change. You shall keep my statutes and my judgments. He didn't say this which a man does now, which if a man does, he shall live by them by keeping his statutes and his judgment. I told you, Paul never meant for us to keep his statutes and his judgments. Genesis 2 and 18. And Yahuwah said, it's not good. We know this scripture. It's not good that man should be alone. So he says he made him a helper. What did Paul say? First Corinthians 7 and 27. Are you bound to a wife? Okay, you're married. He says, do not seek to be loose. All right, he's saying stay with her. Are you loose? Okay, you unmarried. Are you loose from a wife? Do not seek a wife. So he's telling single people, here's your churches and camps, they're not going to tell you. They're not going to bring this out. Although it's in there, they're not going to bring it out. And if you don't look into it, you will, you will miss it. He's telling single people. Do not seek a wife. Single, he's saying if you're single, don't seek a wife. And then he adds, he adds a little bit to it. First Corinthians 7, 7 and 8. For I wish that all men, men and women, were even as I myself. How was he? He was unmarried. And we understand the story. He, he was rejected by a priest's daughter. And this, listen, he, what he did, he became a, he got circumcised to be a part of the covenant just so he can get with the, the priest's daughter and was rejected. So that's when he began teaching against circumcision and those of the circumcision. We have to understand what's going on. He says, so he want you, all the men, all the women to be as himself, but each one 
has his own gift from the Most High, one in this manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, you see, he's talking about everybody, everybody that's not married, all the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. He's saying don't marry. He's saying don't be fruitful and multiply. This is the enemy's plan. This is a direct change from what the Most High said. He said, it's not good that man should be alone. You should marry. You should want to marry. You should want to multiply. You should want to be fruitful and multiply just like he commanded. And if you are single, the Almighty is saying that's not good. You're living by yourself, men. You're single. You're living by yourself. That's not good. That's not what he intended. He intended for you to be married, be fruitful, and multiply. Deuteronomy 27 and 26. We see a change in the Most High's word. We're, I'm using the word showing you the changes that was made to his word. Cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of this Torah by observing them. And all the people shall say so be it. This is one of the verses I'm quoting a lot here. Cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of the Torah. See, the, the churches in the camp, they fall, they fall guilty of this. They're not confirming all the words. You know, when it says, uh, let not the names of another mighty one come out of your mouth. Let it not even be heard upon your lips. They don't bring this out. And then they tell, I have some, I heard some of the teachers teach. Is that what he's saying? That's not what he's saying. The people said names. And then they're telling the people it's okay to let names of other mighty ones come out of your mouth what did he say in galatians 3 and 10 for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse so us that would keep in torah he's saying we're under a curse for it is written cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them you see you see the change here it says, cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of the Torah by observing them. We ought to confirm. And one thing he didn't do, he did not, com the, the, Paul did not confirm all the words that's written. He never said, keep the commandments. And you understand, he didn't mean to confirm the words that are written. Let's keep, let's keep going. Isaiah 64 and 4. From since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by ear, nor has the eye seen any mighty one besides you who acts for the one who waits for you. Listen for the change. Here comes the change. And make sure you understand. I need to make a point. Look in your Bibles and check and see if these are not the exact places where Paul are quoting from. He is misquoting scriptures. Look in your Bible. It'll tell you these are the verses. They were, these are the verses he's quoting. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen. Notice he start with I first. Law of reversal. Nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. Nor has it entered into the heart of man. See, when we see this, the Christians quote this. Not understanding that's a, there's been a change in the Most High's word. That's not what he said. Nor have it entered into the heart of man the things which the Most High has prepared for them that love him. And he's going to say, but he has revealed them to us through his Ruach. For the Ruach searches all things, yes, the deep things. That's not what it says. From the beginning of the world. Men have not heard. He began with the ear. Men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, nor has the eye seen any mighty one besides you. You see the change? He changed it. Who acts for the one who waits for him? These are simple, basic changes that we see in the scriptures. All right, I want to go to... I want to go here first. I want to go this one. I, I want to go to what he said. This is what Paul said in Romans 3, 10 through 12. And the Christians believe this. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who 
understands. He's saying there's none who understands. There is none who seeks after the most high. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Now, if you read this, and if you didn't look into what the scripture is saying, you will think no one does righteousness. No one in the earth is doing righteousness. No, not one. What is he talking about? Let's put this in the proper contextual meaning. What's, what is saying here? And to do that, we have to go back and read. What's going on? Psalms 14, starting at the first verse. The fool has said in his heart, there is no mighty one. So number one, we're talking about a fool. A fool that does not believe the most high exists. They are corrupt. They who? These fools that don't believe in the most high. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. Listen, they don't believe in the most high. They have done abominable works. They don't know righteousness. There is none who does good. None of these people are doing good. Yahuwah looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they are, if they are any, if there are any who understand, who seek the most high. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. So he's looking down on a group, a generation of corrupt people. And this, we have this. From time to time, we have this. Once Yahshua was scattered, nobody was doing the offering, nobody keeping Torah, nobody keeping Shabbats. These are the, these are the generations he's talking about. He says they have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity, no knowledge, who eat up my people. Uh-oh, now we're talking about, here they're going into captivity, eating up his people as they eat bread. And do not call on Yahuwah. There they are in great fear. For Yahuwah is with the generation of the righteous. We're talking about a generation, a generation of wicked and a generation of righteous. The generation of righteous come from those that keep his word, those that walk perfect before him. So there's a generation of righteous. It's not saying everyone, no one's doing righteous, but the generation of the wicked. It says, you shall, you shame the counsel of the poor, but Yahuwah is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Yahshua will come from Sion. When Yahuwah brings back the captivity of his people, let Yaakov re rejoice and Yahshua Raw be glad. So it's talking about an evil, wicked generation. People that don't believe the Most High. Here's another one. Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23. If a man has committed an iniquity deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day so that you do not defile the land which Yahuwah, your Elohim, has given you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is a curse of Yahuwah. Let's see the change. Watch this change. Major change. Huge change. Why did you change the word of the Most High? Galatians 3 and 13 to throw people off. He's saying the Mashiach has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So he's saying he redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So he's saying Yahushua became a curse instead of our place. This is the Christianity teaching. They said he took our place. He was innocent, but the curse was put on him. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, a direct misquote, a direct change of the law. He did not say cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He says if a man committed iniquity deserving of death and he is put to death, he, this man that committed iniquity worthy of death, and you hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain 
overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him on that day so that you do not defile the land. This was about not defiling the land. 